Hi, my name is Carlos Coronado, I'm a game developer, blah, blah, blah. Today with me is blah, 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 Alexander Pascal. I don't think you need introduction. Uh, I'm really going to put a box over here, whatever. This is my box. Ex Epic Games respect Community them. Manager. I'm not your boss. No, I said respect my box. Ah, so you're your, your boss. Yeah, yeah ah, my then. box. I this, thought you. This, you, this you, very lovely box I that thought you, you know. You, you call me a boss, what the fuck? No, no. You know, I don't want to be your boss. Anyway. You are the expert in this subject. Oh, like, okay. I, I feel that I'm not going to speak a lot in this yes. video. So, um, so yeah, Unreal Engine and AI. Actually, no, we have stuff for you to talk about because I'd like to talk about um, levels of artificial levels intelligence. of artificial intelligence. So there's no like hard set. Uh, this is this is my own personal quick fast rules for Unreal mm -hmm. for one AI in games and two UE4's AI systems. One, I always think of AI as being on kind of different tiers because games only need a finite amount of AI development exactly. and anything past that is one either frivolous or too detrimental because you could be making it too smart and or too capable and then that can hurt your um, your game so what I'm talking about is this um, one like level one for me would be a game that you have a enemy and it uses pathfinding to locate something or an, uh, something that uses just pathfinding essentially and its idea is it just goes somewhere and that's it. And we so have a really game, exam uh, game example really, about that. <laughs> really amazing game example, uh, Infernium. Uh, Carlos's game over Infernium, PS4, Switch, PC, released in April. It gets it's literally... Great, great praise for its AI. Uh, what's its AI do? Uh, move to location and move to the player location or uh, don't move at all. Yep. Like that's... that's it really only has all two it is, states. I wouldn't even even call it artificial intelligence because yeah. it's just a move, simple move to location now. But it, it doesn't even have a, a an animation to attack. Or, no. or once they reach you, the, the screens go it, red. Yeah, it has and, no perception system. And you know, no you, you know what? Uh, people fucking love that yeah. artificial they, intelligence. They, they think it's very clever. Yeah, journalists. If you read read uh, reviews from Inferno, they they will say like. The artificial intelligence of Infernium is great because the enemy always knows where you are. He always <laughs> takes the shorter path, and that's actually part of the game itself. That yes. that the, the 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 artificial intelligence is predictable, so you can kind of play with it. But it's it's amazing because as a game developer, you know that it's the shittiest yeah. artificial intelligence. It, it's literally nothing special, but people seem to like it. And for the kind of game that Infernium was, that it's a game about making you feel. Uh, nervous and making you anxious. Yeah, it's about anxious. anxiety. It's yeah, about yeah, anxiety. It, yeah, you get, ex you, get anxiety. you get constantly chased by by someone who is slower than you, but he's constantly chasing you until you find a way to escape uh, to a place that he can't reach. But it works, and yeah. and it's it's a blueprint node, and there's a whole game that costs twenty five bucks built around it, and no one complained about the artificial intelligence. No. No, but that's, so, that's kind of the, the, the most base example of um, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. Uh, AI should only be what you need it to be. So this is like my idea of level one, very base AI. It's, it's pathfinding. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, uh, as we get into these, these more complex concepts, it's going to be more about the perception systems and, and how they determine whether or not they care about the player. But really, he has two states, standing still, or chasing the player. There are other enemies that you oh, yeah, they you have more, me, yeah, more they, states. They, the, they have more. They are like kind of patrolling, but yeah, super but, simple. But too. the core character that you see, the red, yeah, the, sheet, the, the, the blanket, red, the blanket, the, the of red Infernium. cloak, uh, enemy of Infernium that you see everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was gonna say throw it on. Um, yeah, it's actually just it always knows where the player is because if you design any AI, you know that the easiest thing to do is just say get the player's yeah. character location in the world. And then move to it. It's it's uh, deadly smart, but you have to make your AI look like it's thinking and doing other things, etc. But in Carlos's case, he really didn't. It was just a distance proximity thing. You enter the proximity. And it actually was on purpose. Like I was yeah. conscious that, and I, I and all the game design decisions were done around that. About the artificial intelligence need to be simple because it needs to be a like brutal. Yeah, that's that's a key. And level two. And technically, this technically that is already a state machine. But level two for me is when we get to a state machine with three or more functioning parts. Otherwise, we're really just toggling between two things. But so Pac-Man, uh, Pac-Man is a great example of 
uh, enemies that have a three prong like a three part state system where they yep. have uh, they have a thing where they are either actively uh, hunting the player because they're like close enough they have a thing where they're um, going somewhere uh, just random and then they have one where they like they might deliberately move away from the player so uh, there's like an evade kind of state it's really mm -hmm. odd uh, and so each of the four ghosts just switches up how they interpret um, each of those states and how and when to switch them on so you have uh, the red ghost is especially aggressive and will be mostly in the trying to find you and move to you but then will occasionally change but uh, and then you have one that almost never goes aggressive and mostly just I'd say ends like up in the opposite side. Never choose simple state machine. Yeah, yeah, these are these are simple state machines, uh, and state machines in general I consider to be kind of on the second level. Just you know that you have enumerations or something like this that bounce between the concept of states of mind. Mm -hmm. So always think, um, you know, my guy only needs to do three things. I don't need a full behavior tree, and I don't. You know, I, I just need blueprints. So, so in these levels, we're talking about blueprints with maybe an enumerator for the states if it's more than two. Um, but an enumerator is just a number with a word attached yep. that allows you to better understand what that number meant. Um, and before enumerators existed, programmers would keep charts of enumeration number like bytes. And it's like this is the byte that represents one means this and two means that. And they'd have sheets. So enumerators, use them, they're easy and, and fun. Um, and we have to talk also about uh, available primate structures. Yeah, this is where we get into uh, level three of things. So after we've gotten past the uh, basics of things like state machines, we get into more complex structures and uh, this is where Unreal really shines, is in the behavior tree layer. And this is about as far as we can really talk about uh, in, in Unreal. Because uh, it doesn't have a hierarchical task network, which would be the next one up yet. Mieszko has made an alpha, and it's in the plugins still, but it is not. It's like a point zero one. Yeah, yeah. It's one percent done. It is don't not, don't try yet. Don't even. You want don't to even. Yeah. Toy to see what it is. Uh, yeah. Look at the code of it, maybe, but it is not functional yet. Um, but as of this video, I should say. So uh, the behavior tree system is similar to state machines, except for you create like a uh, an idea of a state where you say, under these conditions, um, we're going to do these series of actions. And then in a behavior tree, you make that little structure of do of conditions are met, do certain actions, and you prioritize like it. Like patrol, but if you find an enemy, then do not patrol, yes. chase the enemy. Or yeah. So, so, it's, yeah, so you, you'll probably have a, a series of priority states, like the state machine. But a state machine requires you to manually say this flows into that, that flows into this, this flows there and can flow back and forth. Yeah. Um, in a behavior tree, it will read every possible state and you say this one is priority one, priority two, and priority three, and four, and five. And then it will, uh, the behavior tree reads through the priorities in order and when it hits the highest priority that it meets the, uh, the um, conditions to activate it, like uh, can see player and also has ammo, I want, I want, then I, follow and shoot the player or something. I, I want to put a really dirty example. So imagine that oh you gosh. do a, yeah artificial intelligence of a human. He wants to eat, fuck, and sleep. Okay, yeah. Okay, do, I, do the human wants to fuck? Yes. Have I sleep? No, then I'm so tired to fuck, I need to sleep first. Yeah, yeah. That's so, how you have it too. Yeah, so, but this is actually how, yeah, we, we generally, um, this is generally how humans do behave. Our, our number one priority is exactly. don't die. Like, and so if, if we were using real humans as an example. If you're starving, you're not watching this video. Yeah. <laughs> you, you will be like yeah. searching for food. Yeah, this would be really low in that's your That's how we came to that's actually. A yeah, that's how, how it kind of functions. So you, you would be able to do something like, oh, um, check, check a condition for health. And if your health is below a certain point, then you are dying and therefore ignore everything else drop all the yeah. lower priority and oh my god it's time to find a health pack or food so we can restore health etc so you determine what that action means when i am when i'm bleeding out etc um and then you can uh you can also get into the hierarchical task networks which is phew, next level so the other things you should be aware of as far as pre-made stuff in unreal are things like crowd control 
uh, and using crowds of AI. It has an AI controller, which is default, but then it has detour. We're, we're, we're actually going to AI put controller. links of all, everything we're saying in the description. In the, so in the documentation. Yeah. Uh, so there's docs for all of these. It's great. But Fortnite. But Fortnite, Fortnite uses this. Fortnite save the world. Because save the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, so in Battle Royale, there's no there's artificial no intelligence, <laughs> and sometimes not even intelligence. So. Yeah, there's not even human intelligence in there. Sometimes, you know, if you've ever played uh, Fortnite on that team, you've been on that team. But anyway, but but on Save the on World, save the world they, they have some of the best AI. You could really robust, actually. really robust, clever AI. It solves mazes. Yeah. Uh, it uses its wits to figure out if it should bust out a wall or try to solve a maze of pathing, uh, which is really clever the way that they use the pathfinding versus obstacle destruction system um, but what you should be aware of is that they have the detour crowd system so if you have a lot of um, if you have a lot of AI you can have crowds and crowds of AI that move naturally but if you have like just one off here and there those still work and are way more performant exactly. than a crowd um, but but you have these systems that are they're there for you in UE4 um, sometimes you just need somebody to say hey it exists so this is me listing off things that you can do uh, and things that exist uh, and you can work with. Um, and uh, I guess, oh, right. Uh, actually, uh, just to say the behavior trees. Quickly. Bef before we totally wrap it up. Um, yes, please, please, please look at the documentation on behavior trees. It is very robust. There's tons of UE4 tutorials on it. I think you'll find that if you enjoy blueprints, you will find the um, behavior tree system to be the next step up in power but it's almost like a step down in difficulty they're they're in my mind they're less complicated than blueprints even and also they could wait to something you are doing but we cannot talk about it uh yeah i can but i can mention it in here you can mention it? yeah it's not under it's not under wraps really I world just, premiere world, pr world premiere uh so i am writing a book on artificial intelligence for the, ue4 the, the official artificial intelligence book for yeah, the official officially backed signed um by my by my buddies uh lewis Cataldi. hey lewis hello uh, lewis hey lewis uh yeah uh, from epic games so i figured this is a good time to make mention of it uh it'll be coming out hopefully soon i've been working on it for a little while now and it is an introduction to the systems that exist for for um, behavior trees, uh, the pathfinding system, and uh, everything that's under the sun, anything that Unreal can do, I try to cover the introduction to it for you um, without getting into tons of custom code. Because for me, it's about learning the engine in the book and not generic AI concepts or anything like that. So if you want to learn, uh, by the way, really good uh, how to apply generic AI concepts, uh, Peter L. Newton also has a book for UE4 and AI. Link in the description. Yeah, but um, mine is uh, about the tools that exist very specifically. His is very much the um, how does AI work and how can you work with it in UE4. And I think we wrap things up with this. Yes. So yeah, hope you liked it and see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.